Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drake. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. If you're a DM who has recently learned that in D&D, corpses are considered objects and now you're planning to use a horde of mimics to recreate the plot of John Carpenter's The Thing, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. One of the main things that kept me from fully embracing the role-playing game hobby as a younger man was that I thought, thanks to decades of stereotyping in media, that D&D attracted some weird types of people. Well, as it turns out, I was a weird type of person, and I was attracted to D&D, so in a way, I was right. But that's besides the point. D&D has become a lot more mainstream in recent years thanks to media like Critical Role and Stranger Things. But to be perfectly honest, I would not have a channel if role-playing games still didn't attract the rare, socially maladjusted deviant. What kind of deviant, you may ask? Well, it depends. It can range from someone who stacks their dice at the most annoying times to, mm, someone who follows you home with something that might be a knife in their pocket. How incredibly British of them! The story I have for you today stars a player who gets caught up in some inter-party drama only for one of the players to show the more unhinged side of their personality and quickly turns this into a story that wouldn't be out of place on r slash let's not meet. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into the horrifying world of r slash RPG horror stories. Enjoy. This week's story comes from Reddit user Ethereal Compositions and is titled, That Guy Singles Out Another Player, Causes Endless Drama and Stalks Me IRL. Hi there, Reddit. Haven't posted in ages and I never thought I'd be coming back to this subreddit out of all of them. But you never know where life takes you over this great ocean that we call to interwebs. <sighs> Just in case you forgot, we were reading a story from Reddit. I want to preface this story by telling you that I am 100% sure there are no good guys to be found here. So if you're going in looking for a villain in this scenario while I am definitely going to point him out, at the end of the day I believe that we all were jerks in one way or another. So I don't want this to come off as me pointing fingers only out of that guy. I am merely writing this out of my need to get the bullshit off my chest, and also after seeing Den of the Drake's most recent YouTube video regarding another stalker story, I was inspired to share mine. That said, I wish to shout out Den of the Drake, keep up the great work bro, may your channel keep growing. So uh, for context, OP is talking about this video from a year ago. Yeah, I'm a bit late on finding this one. The characters of this story include me, a fresh D&D player who has, and will, probably always be more into the role-playing aspect rather than combat and game technicalities. As such, I played a curious rogue who was a lot into exploration, smuggling, being sneaky, and sabotaging enemies in combat. Yes, I am an edgelord IRL. Yes, I like to wear all black, and yes, I have long dark hair, and no, I do know when to reel in the edginess and act like a normal person. Archer, a seasoned player playing an optimized combat archer in our homebrewed setting. He is also a huge DC fan, and was really into the Arrowverse at the time. Sadly, he can get quite competitive and has a bit of an ego, which is one of the main reasons why this story even exists. DM, close friend of the archer. Not much of my friend, and whenever he played, he would go for the paladin class. Pure lawful good, of course. As a DM, he always tries to be fair and ensures that consequences always existed whenever something stupid happened. Unfortunately, he would end up being a collateral victim of that guyism. And of course, merfolk paladin. That guy, and the reason why I am writing this tale. His character was a representative of some weird sea god a la Poseidon, who acted as an emissary for his people. Now that we are set, let me take you back to the days of yonder, May of 2017. I had just moved out of my folks' place, and I had gotten my own apartment in a bigger city than my province hometown. While I knew DM, Archer, and Merfolk Paladin all from Elder Scrolls Online, I was happy to find out that they were all living or were staying or renting in the same place that I was moving. In fact, I met Merfolk Paladin on one of the first nights that I moved in, and he showed me the ropes around. It was pretty cool. 
Back then, I had put a pause on college and was focused on maintaining my new job in order to keep surviving in the new place. So I couldn't really socialize much except with my co-workers, who were all normies with whom I shared little to no interest. As such, Merfolk Paladin was the only friend that I had at the time. To show my gratitude for him spending time with me, I would regularly invite him to spend the weekends at my place, treat him with home-cooked meals and alcoholic beverages, and never once asked anything of him. Hell, I never even complained about him back then, and even when he puked all over my bathroom floor after we found out one night that he has a low tolerance for Jack Daniels. That aside, summer comes by. I take a few days off and he introduces me to DM and Archer IRL, with whom I had been corresponding over Facebook for a year now. They were as I expected them to be. DM was a well-read religious guy with weird fixations, and Archer was a well-built truck driver who took no shit from anyone, but was really cool once you got to know him. After we spent a night drinking, discussing movies and girls, and generally being laid back, DM has this great idea to start a D&D campaign. All except me were versed into the game, and while I had heard about the game before, I was reticent to join. However, due to a mixture of beer, wine, and whiskey in my blood, it wasn't too hard for them to convince me to create a character. First thing in the morning, of course. Things went well after that. DM was really helpful in understanding what I wanted from the game, and helped me to create my first character sheet. I was really bad at creating stats and choosing items, but I was really creative when it came to my backstory. So the DM encouraged me to go on with the idea, and thus our campaign was born. As I got to know DM well, I soon realized that we were almost total opposites. While I am an atheist, he was a devout Christian who even went as far as trying to reconvert me and change me back into being straight. I'm bisexual, by the way. But I always know how to keep my calm and remind him that I choose how to live my own life. And no amount of religious guilt tripping will change that. The reason I am saying this is because he had a homebrewed campaign and his world of Theodosia was what I would describe as ancient Greece mixed with Bible stories. While he did allow a polytheistic pantheon, he ensured that the Zeus god was as close to Yahweh as possible, and that his son Hercules was a messiah-like figure of whose amazing deeds our characters constantly heard from NPCs on our travels. Thankfully, he didn't pick on my rogue for being bisexual, and who openly flirted with NPCs in order to make them uncomfortable and squeeze out information. It was all in good fun. It was all pretend. We all had a good laugh. Obviously, nobody would take an RPG of a made-up world seriously, would they? Would they? Fast forward 10-ish sessions. Our characters are around level 5 to 6, and we have been enrolled by a king into a local tournament. While my rogue's constitution was garbage incarnate, he was a smooth talker. So my character managed to convince the king to let him oversee the tournament and judge. And in exchange, he offered his spying services to uncover a recent assassination plot. Now this is where I must commend the DM's creativity. Since he was working on a novel with characters based on the Zodiac, he took 10 of them and transformed them into NPC participants at the tournament, with Archer filling the role of Sagittarius while Merfolk Paladin was Pisces. Subtle, right? He had set the tournament in such a way that the two PCs were in different camps, and after a couple of sessions of them rolling dice and defeating NPCs in epic battles, all while my character was doing separate sessions with the DM investigating the assassination plot, it all came down to the fateful session where Archer and Merfolk Paladin would face off in the final. Now this is where I must explain that both Archer and Merfolk Paladin are really competitive guys. Archer is a lot into soccer and an avid FIFA player, while Merfolk Paladin spends countless hours on Magic the Gathering trying to gather as many wins as possible. So you can guess that none of them would have allowed their characters to go down without a fight. The battle begins and Archer immediately goes for Merfolk Paladin's armor in an attempt to crack it with his enchanted arrows. In retaliation, the Merfolk Paladin tries to engage him in hand-to-hand -hand combat, since he knew that it was his constitution that was greater. So there I am, assisting at two guys in their mid-twenties attempting to outsmart the other at a role-playing fight worse than two old men playing chess in a park. Frankly, I am quite speechless at this, and spend the rest of my session just texting my then-boyfriend at the time. 
Eventually it all ends with Archer barely winning after managing to crack open Merfolk Paladin's armor and stabbing him with his last arrow in the middle of the chest. It wasn't fatal, but it was enough to knock out his character and seal his victory. And as DM tries to RP the Archer's victory, and describes how his character goes to help his opponent back up and congratulate him for the great battle, you can guess what happened. Merfolk Paladin gets up and is absolutely fuming at us all. He starts shouting that the fight was rigged, and Archer fudged his rolls, and he should have only tossed his dice on the middle of the table for all to see. That DM was playing favorites, and any possible excuse that you can think of. We all stare at him in disbelief as he throws his tantrum thing, which was totally out of character of him up until that point. While we try calming him down, he throws his dice and character sheet in his backpack and storms out without another word. Needless to say, that killed our mood for playing D&D on that night. And DM was so burnt out by what happened that he decided to abruptly end that campaign and leave his content for the novel that he's still working on. Technically, this should have ended here, right? Oh dear reader, I so wish that were the case. But unfortunately for us all, there's still more. Later that night, as I got home, Merfolk Paladin begins assaulting my Facebook with long rants that can be basically summed up as, Dude, what the fuck? You were there, you clearly saw that Archer cheated, yet you said nothing. Why did you spend your time on the phone and not say anything? You know that DM is a biased little bitch who always sides with Archer because he has no backbone of his own. And he's a religious nut. I simply roll my eyes, change into my jammies, and reply that I wasn't even paying attention to what happened, because I'm not that much into combat, and that I just want no part in their drama. Then I go to sleep. The next morning I wake up to see Merfolk Paladin post long rants on Facebook about how Archer is a no good cheater who couldn't even finish high school, is illiterate, and a can't say that word on YouTube. He also attacked DM for being tyrannical and knowing nothing but how to spew shitty philosophy all day while being lost in Bible la la land. There was no mention of me and I still had a day off. So I PM'd him and asked him what this was all about. He responds immediately. Did he even get to sleep that night? Saying that Archer admitted to fudging his roles and is a self-professed cheater and DM is being so unfair and biased for taking his side. He then demands that I cut my friendship with Archer and DM, and that I join him on his quest of spreading hate against them to all of our online friends, so that everyone will know what kind of people they are. I internally sighed and asked what's wrong with him. I firmly tell him that both he and Archer are good friends of mine and I don't want to choose between them that we shouldn't have let a mere game get in the way of our friendship. What do you think his response was, dear reader? Do you think he would suck up his pride and admit that he was in the wrong? Do you think that he could feel bad for putting me in such a position after I hosted him, fed him, ensured that he had fun weekends, and never once asked the same of him? Of course not, that would be totally silly. Instead, he exploded into paragraph upon paragraph of vitriol-filled hate directed at me. For starters, I was a spineless little bitch who would be capable of so much more, but I decided to limit myself by living in Archer's shadow. I was apparently also biased for daring to choose Archer and DM over him. And unlike the high school dropout and religious nut job, I was studying for an English degree and knew to speak well, but never knew when to shut up. I could keep on the tirade of insults he kept throwing at me, but I will just sum them up. He viewed me as a loser with no social life who clung to him for friendship, and he threatened that he would spread the secret that I was bisexual and even threatened that he would find my folks over Facebook and out me and my then boyfriend. I'm still not out, and thankfully he never found them. I was in absolute shock. I never once expected this from someone whom I always tried to be as kind and welcoming to as possible. To say I was hurt by this piece of shit attitude was a downright understatement. So I wrote back a huge paragraph as well telling him that I never wanted anything more out of him than just his friendship. Never once did I ask back of him what I did for him, and that if he was really going that low as to attack us with ad hominems over a freaking pretend game, then he should seriously rethink his life. In response, he began trying to mock troll me, 
saying how I should go cry in a corner and slit my wrists. So I told him to never speak to me again, and I blocked his Facebook and WhatsApp. It was only later during a drunken Christmas party that Archer would confess to me that he indeed fudged two of his last rolls. He turned his d20 to change a 2 into a nat 20, and he also turned a d4 to change a 1 to a 4. The only reason he did was because on the prior session, he caught Merfolk Paladin spying on his character sheet, which he viewed as cheating. So in response, when Merfolk Paladin, DM, and I went to go buy some snacks, Archer took a picture of Merfolk Paladin's character sheet and prepared to counter him in battle. He also claimed that he made the fatal mistake of admitting these things on the night when Merfolk Paladin had a meltdown and apologized, in an attempt to patch things up with him. As you can see, that only served to add fuel to the fire, I'm afraid. Both DM and Archer blocked him and kicked him out of our group. So this should have been the end of the story, no? I'm afraid there's still a bit more to this. You see, Merfolk Paladin had common friends with Archer and DM, and soon those would become my common friends as well. Two years after that incident, I was at a party at another friend's house. Out of the blue, Merfolk Paladin shows up uninvited. The host is surprised when he hears the two of us know each other. Merfolk Paladin puts up a great act. He pretends that he missed me so much that I was a great host that whenever he listens to a metal band, he thinks of me basically kissing my ass. He did the same when we used to be friends, but he always praised me to heaven and back. But this time, I was wiser, and I spent the whole night giving him passive-aggressive quips, to which he acted totally shocked and offended. Needless to say, after I left, I PM'd the host and gave him a TLDR of what happened. And since then, I have never crossed paths with Merfolk Paladin at an event. A week after that meeting, it was a late Sunday night, and I was on my way home after a long day of partying, drinking, playing board games, and generally fooling around. My neighborhood is fairly quiet, but also dark at night. I had walked out of the subway, crossed the road, and made my way down the dimly lit alleys that were darkened by rich trees. I was tired, and my only thoughts were of a warm shower and soft bed. Then, out of the blue, I get the strange feeling that I'm being followed. I take a quick glance with the corner of my eye, and would you know it, a tall figure is only a few feet behind me, walking at a similar pace. I dismiss it as just my imagination and keep going. Eventually, I exit the alley into an open street. There's a non-stop candy shop at my left, and a student dorm on my right and thankfully there are a few people around having a talk. I turn around and I am horrified to see Merfolk Paladin. He's wearing a black hoodie and is pretending to be on his phone, but he did the fatal mistake of stopping as soon as I stopped and turned around, so he could not hide the fact that he was following me. I ask him what he's doing here. He puts his phone down, gives me a creepy smile, and reaches for something in his pocket. Time seemed to freeze at that moment. I could feel my heart racing as I took back slow steps. I could swear I saw a knife handle being pulled out of his pocket, although the dim street lights might have played a trick on my eyes. Needless to say, I bolted the hell out of there, and thankfully he did not give chase. When I had the courage to look back, I saw that the guys who were having a chat in front of the candy shop were right in front of the alley. I got home and locked the door as well as I could as the sudden realization hit me. That creep knew where I lived. I immediately texted DM and Archer, and they were in pure disbelief. DM advised me to contact the authorities while Archer was so pissed that he was about to gather a bunch of thugs and go find where Merfolk Paladin lived just to beat the bejesus out of him. We all knew where we lived except for him. He never once invited us to his home because his family was always too busy to have guests. I told DM that my dad is a retired cop and I would talk this out with him, and I calmed Archer down from doing something stupid. Still, I couldn't sleep well that night. For the mere thought that I had hosted that freak in my house and shared so many of my secrets with him haunts me to this day. Thankfully, my dad gave me some tips on self-defense and advised me what numbers I should call if I suspect I am being stalked again. In hindsight, I should have pressed charges against him, but I had no proof at hand and I was just too busy with both my job and picking up college. I decided to let the matter drop and went on with my life. Aftermath DM had gotten engaged and moved out to another town. I last met him last year at a Christmas party, 
he has a new group and has worked more on his novel. The campaign is also based on his homebrew and the new players are having a blast. Archer and I are in touch on an almost daily basis. Although due to our jobs, we're rarely face to face. We still play ESO together and we swear that one day I will corrupt him and get him into Magic the Gathering, whether he likes it or not. While he no longer has time for D&D, I am in a new D&D group with a new DM who is an absolute joy to play with. He has earned my 100% respect for his world building, storytelling, and balanced encounters. I never got in contact with Merfolk Paladin again, but the last I heard of him was from a common friend who said the dude had picked up DMing and has gathered his own D&D group. Sadly, the party didn't last more than three sessions for unknown reasons because I wasn't curious about the details. So that's my story, Reddit. In hindsight, we were all assholes. Archer should have never cheated or stooped down to Merfolk Paladin's level. DM should have called them both out and punished them. And I should have paid more attention to the kinds of people I welcomed into my life. Until next time, stay safe. Alright kids, today's lesson is on situational awareness. Look, I'm not gonna go full boomer and be like, Ah, these damn kids on they damn phones! But holy sh OP, if this story went down exactly as you say it did, then you could have actually died here. I think it's most likely that Paladin was there just trying to scare you because if he actually wanted to hurt you, he would have succeeded. It doesn't matter how much self-defense your dad has taught you. If someone is actually coming at you with a knife, no self-defense measures short of a 9mm are going to stop you from getting cut. I won't disclose too much about my own personal background, but let's just say I got some practical knowledge here. It's no secret that things can be scary out there, and while it's a great idea to remember that things are never as bad as the news media would like you to believe they are, you gotta be prepared for cases like this, because you only need to f up once. Like, this isn't even the funny haha -ha dragon anymore. Situational awareness is the number one prevention tactic towards situations like this. Know the threat before it becomes a threat, and always be aware of what's happening around you, and 9 out of 10 times, things are going to turn out okay for you if you respond mindfully to a potentially dangerous situation. I'm not saying be paranoid and come up with a plan to kill everyone you meet like you're about to put on an Australian accent and start throwing bottles of Gerardi everywhere, but what I am saying is that we, as a younger generation, have a bit of a habit of tuning out the world. We always gotta be listening to music, we always gotta have our headphones on listening to podcasts, and we always gotta have a funny haha -ha cartoon dragon shout worthless platitudes in our ears all the time. And we're either drunk or high when we're doing it. We do not like paying attention to what's going on around us, and I'm guilty of it too. You just gotta be aware that being absent at the wrong time can have some serious consequences. It goes without saying that Paladin here is unhinged in a terrible way that no one could have ever really predicted, and it's that unpredictability is what makes it the most dangerous. Sorry to get all heavy out of nowhere, but this is going to be a lot more impactful to people than any quality of life improvements in a role-playing game ever could. Okay, enough of that. As for the actual in-game interactions, yeah. OP was correct in saying that everyone was kind of an ass here. When D&D devolves into a dick measuring contest, you know it's time to call it quits. I mean, yeah, it's better than actually coming to blows, which we know is not out of the realm of possibility with the paladin here. But if you're sharing a table with two people who can turn a fun dice game into a source of such spite and vitriol-filled anger, then why even bother trying to have fun at that point? Well, I have both good and bad news. The bad news is like every good horror villain, we have not heard the last of Merfolk Paladin. And the good news? Well, it seems like OP has survived long enough for there to be a part two. Here's hoping it stays that way. The Return of the Stalker That Guy Hi there, Reddit. I'm surprised it's only been a month since I last posted, and I haven't gone back to another hiatus, but here we are. On my last post, I was intending on sharing other RPG horror stories from my past, which were shorter, but I'm afraid that is not the case for now. On my last post, which can be read here, I was stalked by someone who I viewed as a close friend, and who tried to turn me against two other friends as well. And unfortunately for all of us, there is a follow-up to this due to recent events. 
First, I must start by prefacing that Merfolk Paladin, that guy, has lots of social media due to our common geeky interests. I could easily find him on places such as YouTube and DeviantArt. However, I forgot that he also has a Reddit and mostly lurked on RPG-related subreddits. I'm fairly sure that he had discovered my post, read it, and realized that it was about himself, because I can't find another explanation for what happened these past few days. Anyway, the characters for this particular story are as follows. Me. Now a fairly seasoned D&D player with five campaigns under his belt. I'm still pretty uneasy when it comes to combat and spellcasting, but I can happily say that I've improved my character building in RP thanks to the help of my current group. New DM. Really awesome guy. Super geeky in the best ways. Has a vast knowledge of many domains and is always a pleasure to spend time with, despite our political differences. Archer. Unfortunately, now a retired D&D player due to his job, but we're still close friends and we speak on an almost daily basis on the phone. He is the victim of that guyism in the previous story. Artist. Casual role player and another geek. We used to date back in late high school, early college, before I met any of the other people mentioned here. But sadly, we couldn't just cut it due to the highly different personalities as well as romantic egos. Despite this, we're still close friends to this day. Merfolk Paladin, that guy who threw a tantrum over losing a tournament in Old DM's campaign, then tried starting a full-blown hate campaign on social media against Archer and Old DM, and later also stalked me and attempted to intimidate me by seemingly pulling a knife. Last July had been a pretty busy month. Between working hard at my job, participating in new DM's campaigns, deck building and Magic the Gathering, thanks to my new D&D flavored set, I barely had time to dedicate to my other creative hobbies, such as writing or even planning my birthday, which wasn't yesterday. I had invited Artist, who lives in another town, to my birthday party, an invitation which he gladly accepted. During last month, he begins posting pictures of the new painting he is working on. And much to my surprise and delight, I see those are sketches of the main characters from my story. I comment on one of the pictures, expressing my gratitude for the upcoming present, because I always love when I receive fan art of my story. And he replies in a similar manner, thanking for all the years of our friendship, etc, etc. The rest of the month went by without any issues. Until one night, after I close my work laptop and get ready to take a shower, Artists PMs me over Facebook and asks me if something happened regarding Merfolk Paladin. I admit I got the goosebumps when I read that name. When the realization comes to me that I had never told Artists about the drama which happened four years ago between my old group and that guy, I reply to him that I haven't heard of Merfolk Paladin in a long time and I wasn't keeping in touch, to which he replies back with screenshots of their conversation. Apparently, Merfolk Paladin knew about our former romantic relationship, and that we were still close friends. I must have told him one night when we were drunk. So he came to Artist, claiming that he was really worried about me, bullshitting him about how I've been acting really gloomy, and gave off self-harming tendencies to him. Worried about my safety, Artist intended to contact me, but I was offline due to my work hours, so instead he chose to pursue the conversation and then message me once my shift ended. Merfolk Paladin then goes on long tangents about how I am emotionally unstable and clingy, how I need to be coddled and babied by big boys, how I can't be trusted to live on my own, and how I always need a friend to look after me. This unfortunately touched artist's compassionate bone, who asked if there was something he can do to help. Thankfully, Merfolk Paladin is not the most subtle person, and he begins bombarding artists with personal questions regarding me, ranging from, what is OP's daily schedule? To, do you know what really causes OP to have an emotional reaction? Artist responds to them with, I don't know, slash, I'm not sure, or some other variation of that, and adds that Merfolk Paladin should probably talk to me personally if he wanted to find out. Of course, that guy avoids mentioning the fact that I blocked him on Facebook. He then tells Artist that he knows about our past relationship, and takes a new angle. If you really loved OP, then please help me so I can help him. I'm just as concerned as you are about his safety. I must commend Artist for not taking the bait, and giving him an appropriate response. 
OP is an adult. He can take care of himself. I'll discuss with him later after he finishes his shift. If I notice he's acting differently, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. After seeing that conversation, I was a little shocked that the dude is still at it. He hadn't given any signs of stalking me and we hadn't crossed paths in two years. And yet there he was, still up to his old tricks. Then the realization that he was browsing Reddit immediately hit me. And you can bet your lucky stars that my face had a really heavy collision with my palm. The first thing I do is link my previous story to Artist and ask him to read it without telling Merfolk Paladin anything. Then I immediately phone up Archer and inform him of what happened. He explodes in anger and says that he's personally going to find out where Merfolk Paladin lives to give him the beating that he so desperately deserves. What followed next was basically a half hour of both of us pouring out all of our gathered frustration directed towards this one toxic individual. By the time we were done, Archer told me that he no longer wanted to hear anything about him, and I couldn't agree more. We knew that we had to do something to make sure that he would stop bothering us and trying to get back to us. Old DM is safe because he had moved to another city. Archer is also safe because he's a well-built dude and he's been into a couple of fights, so there's no way Merfolk Paladin could ever attempt the stalker crap on him. I was his only gateway to getting payback on our old D&D group. Trying to gather my thoughts, I advise Archer to stay put until further notice and give me time to think on what to do. He agrees and I hang up on the call. Back on Facebook, Artis is stunned by the story and asks me which character is which person IRL. I give him the real names and he tells me that Merfolk Paladin's behavior was fishy since their interactions were always just praises. He never seemed to show much genuine care about others besides surface pleasantries. I advise artists to be careful with that guy, because the latter could see his posts. He probably saw his reply to my comment, and must have realized that he could get back to me through him. I don't know what he did afterwards, but he no longer pressed the issue regarding Merfolk Paladin. I assumed he either blocked him or told him that all was okay with me then proceeded to ignore his messages. Fast forward a week later and new DM contacts me. He had posted some painted minis and a digital map that he drew himself for our current campaign. And guess who decided to comment on his posts and praise him? Merfolk Paladin, of course! New DM claimed that he didn't know much about him when he friended him on Facebook, just that he was a fellow nerd who frequented our game stores. I had told new DM about him way back when we were sharing some of our past D&D experiences, and he had straight up said to my face that if he had a player like him at his table, he would not hesitate to kick him out. I send new DM the screenshots of the conversation between Artist and Merfolk Paladin, and he is absolutely disgusted before unfriending and blocking him. I advise him to reply to the praise posts, engage in conversation with him, and see if he can find a way to make him stop. Thankfully, he has a plan, and he advises both me and Archer to stay put for the time being. Fast forward to the 2nd of August. I finish my shift and I am ready to listen to some music and disconnect from the rest, when I open Facebook and am assaulted with a series of screenshots from new DM. Apparently, Merfolk Paladin indeed tried to contact him and went through the same angle that he did with Artist. New DM pretends to be worried sick about me and says he will answer any of Merfolk Paladin's questions, but first he begins talking about his friendship with me and gets him to do the same. As they do, New DM lies to him that I moved to a new apartment, closer to his neighborhood, and then shifts the conversation to D&D, campaigns, homebrews, and eventually gets Merfolk Paladin to discuss about our old campaign from 2017. He revealed that he was way more into it than we gave him credit for, and that he had single-handedly written his character's backstory, got it approved by Old DM, and bragged that Old DM loved his character so much that he introduced him in the novel that he's working on, something that he didn't seem to bother to do with the homophobic slur rogue and drunken archer. Then he went on and on about how he was the soul of the campaign, how he was keeping the mood up with his funny jokes, how Archer and I were just stereotypical edgelords trying to steal his spotlight with our Mary Sues, etc, etc. New DM acts all shocked and feigns indignation at Merfolk Paladin's injustice, then invites him to his current campaign, where I am also playing. 
adding that he can help him cook up a plot to get his payback on my current rogue character. He also welcomes him to use his old character sheet. What followed next were a series of paragraphs about how Merfolk Paladin was going to appear in our campaign by jumping out of a sewer while my new rogue was trying to retrieve an ancient artifact for his party. His character would snatch the artifact from my character's hands and make him look like a total fool. Then, seeing how incredible his acrobatic skills were, the other characters from the party would want to hire him. Then, in the upcoming sessions, Merfolk Paladin would bully my rogue and expose him for being a pathetic man whore with mommy and daddy issues. New DM agrees that this would be a great justice for everything that happened back then. And then Merfolk Paladin asks for a date and time when he can join the session. What do you think New DM's reply was, dear reader? A picture of a man opening a door from the inside and pointing at the sign on it which reads, No homophobic slurs allowed. An obvious jab at Merfolk Paladin. Merfolk Paladin immediately explodes on him, claiming that he's not funny and demanding that he comes to the campaign. New DM then tells him that I have screenshots of both of his attempts to get to me through artists and himself, and says that if he keeps on like this, I will go to the police with evidence and bring up our little nocturnal encounter two years ago when he pulled a knife on me. Merfolk Paladin's response? You have no evidence. Stop slandering me! He then blocked New DM. Later, at my birthday party, artists confirmed that he blocked Merfolk Paladin too. So, that's the follow-up to my first story, about a that guy who took a loss in a fictional D&D tournament way too seriously. As of the writing of this post, he has made no more attempts of getting back to either me or Archer through any of our friends. Though if he does, I will follow new DMs and my dad's advice and inform the police of his harassment. Until next time, stay safe, dear readers. Update. As per your comments, I realize that he's probably still lurking here and might see this post. So I contacted the authorities, reported him, emailed him the screenshots, and got a restraining order on him. Better safe than sorry. Update 2. The police searched Merfolk Paladin's room and found some bags of cocaine. According to his PMs, he was dealing them with his current D&D group. He was fidgeting and acting nervous while being interrogated and refused to answer the allegations that he was online stalking me. As of now, he's looking to at least a couple of years in prison. This has been one crazy ride, but I am happy to say that it is finally over. P.S. Archer, I know you don't really browse Reddit, but in the off chance that you find this post, thank you for all the support you have given me these past four years, and for coming last night to console me and make sure I'm safe. You're a bro, and I'll always be grateful for your friendship. End of story. So, let me get this straight. Your DM's brilliant plan in response to you telling them about your past with this half a decade long grudge holding psychopath who responds to disrespect with threats of violence is to mouth off to the half a decade long grudge holding psychopath with a history of threats of violence. Does this guy have a room temperature IQ or what? He knows where your friend lives you fucking moron. In situations like this, you need to skip the theatrics and skip to the part where you get the authorities involved. I read somewhere in your comments that you're looking to apply for a CCW permit and are learning how to use a gun, which is an excellent idea, and honestly I recommend it for everybody, but that's besides the point. But in reality, your DM here only amped up your already dangerous situation and pushed it to the point where you may actually have to move now because the lie you told was paper thin, and Merfolk Paladin, if he were not in prison right now, could easily double check just by going to your house. Or checking Reddit because you just wrote a Reddit post saying that you moving was a lie, which is pretty dumb. The only reason I'm actually reading this post is because of the update where you confirmed that Merfolk Paladin is not a problem anymore. OP, you got lucky. And part of me wishes that this story actually turns out to be fake, because if it isn't, then this happy ending may not be that watertight. Look, OP, you and your dad are gonna know what's best for you moving forward, but my final recommendation for you is to take a good long look at the company you keep. 
because the best of the bunch are an egomaniac who cheats to prove a point, and a mouth breather who thinks pissing off the knife-wielding stalker is a good idea. And the worst one is the knife-wielding stalker. <sighs> OP, I hope you're doing better and you've learned from this experience. Now before we go, let's take a look at this week's Gallery of the Drake. This week's fan art comes from viewer Ghoul and depicts a midnight ritual where a prospective member of the Cult of the Drake declares fealty to my divine being. Well, 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 if it isn't the new blood. Do you have the offering? Y yes oh magnificent drake i have only the finest jewels in the land for my what the hell is that what wh what's wrong ah uh, jewels i wanted the finest jewels i need a new vape pen and now my day is ruined because i bought skittles vape juice and because of your f up i'll never get to taste the rainbow Thank you again, Ghoul, for submitting your art. If you'd like to see your fan art featured in Gallery of the Drake, be sure to send it to the email in my About section. Fan art is my favorite part of doing YouTube, and it means the world to me that I can inspire artists like you to create artwork like this. With the story over and artwork displayed, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you feel like supporting the channel further, my Patreon and merchandise links are in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Drake.